This slide shows the typical response of a pre-stressed concrete beam subjected to an incremental flexure load until failure. This is the cross sections of the beam. There is a pre-stressing tendon. And these are the reinforcement bar in the section. The beam is subjected to external load, which subsequently lead to an incremental moment until the failure of the section. The incremental moment can be classified into four different stages, which are the decompression moment, cracking moment, post cracking moment, and ultimate moment. The ultimate moment is the largest moments can be taken by the sections, while the compression moment refers to the moments that the entire section still undergoing compressions. The magnitude of moment is the smallest. The cracking moment refers to a state where cracking on the beam sections is observed. As for the post-cracking moment, it represents the stage in between the cracking moment and the ultimate moment, which is after the cracking of the member and before failure of the member. Now let us look at the strain response of the cross section. The strain represents the deformations of the beam sections. This represents the strain of the top part of the beam and this represents the strain of the bottom part of the beam. It is assumed that the relationship from the top part to the bottom part of the beam in terms of strain is always linear, which is straight line. As you can see that the development of strain in the cross sections change in accordance to the magnitude of moment. As indicated in number 1 to 4, as listed in the moment here. As the moment load increase, the compressive strength of the upper part of the beam sections increases. It is until the ultimate strength of the concrete is achieved. As the moment increases, the tensile strength of the bottom part of the beam also increases. It started at zero when during the decompression moment. The strength increases along the increment of the moment. From the strength profile here, which is assumed to be linearly distributed throughout the sections, we are able to determine the strain of the reinforcement bar and tendon in the sections. It is by determining the exact locations of the sections from its specific reference point. The strain in the reinforcement bar and also tendon can be obtained through interpolations of the strain profile at that particular instance. From the strain developed within the sections, we are able to determine the compressive stress and tensile stress in the concrete and tension and reinforcement bar accordingly. The diagram here shows the stress profile of the sections at different stages of the moment. This represents the decompression moment, cracking moment, post-cracking moment, and ultimate moment. 
the stress profile here is basically identical to the strain profile here especially before the cracking occurs at the compression moment the entire section is undergoing compressions there is no tensile strength and there is a little degree of compressive strength as the development of the stress is proportional to the development of the strength this will be the stress profile the stress in the reinforcement bar and the tendon can be calculated based on the strength developed within the reinforcement and tendons next at the cracking moment stage some tensile stress developed within the concrete sections as cracking is yet to occur the concrete contribute a little resistance in tensile stress at the same time the compression stress of the top beam increases upon occurrence of the crack the sections move into the post cracking moment stage cracks develop and concrete do not provide any resistance in tension this is the stage where the concrete is undergoing compressions while all the tensions are taken by the tendon and the reinforcement bar at this stage this compressive stress in the concrete is still considered linearly proportions to the strength developed in the concrete next we move into the ultimate state the stress profile now becomes slightly parabolic due to the non-linear response of the concrete stress the stress accumulate at the compressive regions of the concrete so that it generate adequate compression resistance resultant in order to resist the moment acting on the member similar to the stage 3 all the compression is taken by the concrete and compression reinforcement bar and all the tensions will be taken by the reinforcement bar and the tendon these forces generate the resultant force of FC and FT FC is the summation of the compressive resultant force of the concrete plus the compressive resultant force of the steel while the FT is the summation of the resultant tensile force in the tendons and the reinforcement bar the two force acting at opposite directions and due to the lever arm here it generate resistance to the moment acting on the section this is how the beam section resists the load that generate moment acting on the section it is noted that the strength in the steel increases as the moment increases and when the strength in the steel is greater than its characteristic yield strength we know that the steel has yielded and the concrete stress distribution is considered non-linear when it is greater than 0.5 fck this concept set the basis of the moment resistance of a pre-stressed concrete beam the determinations of the bending resistance MRD is based on a set of assumptions as listed here these assumptions is not fully correct however for the simplicity of analysis it is assumed so 
On basis of such assumptions, the response of the member subjected to moment can still be reliably predicted. Let us look into the assumptions. First, we assume that the strain variations on the cross sections are linear. That means we assume that the section's strain is always in the straight line from the top of the beam to the bottom of the beam. And we assume that the plank sections will always remain plank even though undergoing bending deformations. Also, we assume there is a perfect bond between the concrete and steel. We assume that the change in steel strength will be the same as the strength in the concrete. That's why, in order for us to determine the strength of the tendons and reinforcement bar, we interpolate from the stress diagram. It is assumed that the concrete carry no tensile stress after cracking. With that, only the stage before the cracking moments have the tensile stress of the concrete. However, starting from the post-cracking moment, there is no tensile stress in the concrete. The reinforcement bar and the tendons is assumed to take the tensile stress fully. Next, we assume that the stress in the concrete and steel from the actual or idealized stress strain relationships. It means that we assume there is a strong correlation between the strain diagram with the stress diagram here. Assume that the strain is directly proportional to the stress. By having the modulus of elasticity based on the strain calculated from the strain diagram here, we are able to predict the stress in the concrete and the steel bars. Lastly, the initial strength in pre-stressing tendon is taken into account when determining the stress in the tendon. It is because of the pre-stressing of the tendon, there will be initial strength. And this will have initial stress in the pre-stressing tendon. This will have to be taken into account in the calculations of the stress in the tendon. The diagram here shows the idealized stress block diagram for a concrete in compressions. It can appear in two modes, which is in the parabola rectangular diagram. This is the parabola shapes and the bilinear diagram which is made of two straight lines. Based on the idealized stress blocks, these are the strain limits of the concrete. As classified in different grades of concrete, you may obtain the strain limits of the concrete from the table here or from the analytical relationship. 